So like he said, I'm Andrea. Um, in addition to the other things he said, I'm also extremely nervous. I low-key hope that you can't pick up my heartbeat on this microphone. Um, I'm extremely caffeinated and I'm extremely excited to be here. Nothing makes me more energized than interacting with customers, especially ones that are as passionate and involved as you guys. So. My, I named my presentation Now You Think With Partitions because I couldn't resist the little Easter egg joke with such a fellow nerdy audience. Um, so if you get it, you get 10 points or something. Um, but basically, when I started thinking about Domo Data Pipelines with Partitions, um, it made me think of that video game because when I played that game, um, it made me think very differently about, um, about physics and games. Um, and it, when partitions became available in more and more parts of our product, it made me think differently about our data pipelines. Um, so I'm going. I, we have all different skill levels here, right? Um, and all different specialties. So just to make sure that we all have kind of a base understanding of partitioning and why you care about it, um, I'm just going to go through a couple of uh, notes. So partitioning is a data storage strategy um, in which the data are subset by a part. A partition key tag. So something like date is good. You can do anything though. Um, only when you are updating your data, data, only the specified partitions will be touched when new data is ingested. Um, so this means it's extremely performant um, because it's only accessing data partitions as they're being updated. So little diagram here, you'll see we have our existing data set where you already have four partitions. Your input data set has a new partition for, an, for partition three, which already exists, as well as a new partition for partition five, which doesn't yet exist. So when this new data set is ingested, it will replace existing partition three and append the fifth partition. So why do you want to think about designing partitioning to your pipeline? Um, it can reduce the overall latency end to end because you're processing much less data. Um, it improves the robustness of your pipeline. It's more error tolerant. You're able to build in rolling blocks of data without ending up having duplication or um, having to create some recursive monstrosity, which I'm sure we've all created. I definitely have myself. Um, <laughs> is more efficient, like I said, only the rows that need to be processed are processed, which makes it scalable. You know, finally, we have the ability to have multi-billion row data sets that we can genuinely use and have as part of our ETL. Okay, so if, you, if you've taken the sales pitch so far, you're wondering where in the product is partitioning relevant? It's been relevant in the Domo CLI tool for quite some time. If you were writing your own pipelines through CLI, you could do it there. Um, it's been available in Workbench for a bit. It's becoming increasingly available in our connectors. So that's all on the ingest side, and I would definitely encourage you to explore thinking about partitions from an ingest perspective. However, new in beta, my favorite feature of all time, is getting my favorite feature of all time. So magic is getting partitioning. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're all thrilled. <laughs> yes, so I, the... Most of the most of my presentation, we're going to talk about that. Um, however, before we jump into the specifics of magic partitioning, I want to talk through a few use cases about when you might want to use partitioning. So, an example is if your data has a curing period. So, a lot of social media data has like a seven-day curing period. So, you would ingest only the rolling seven days. You partition on date. Your oldest data is never reprocessed, but you still retain that single data set flexibility for analysis and visualization downstream. Um, so previously, if we wanted to build this out, um, we would have to deduplicate the data in a data flow, creating some recursive monstrosity. Um, so this allows you to only act on that rolling seven days and have it still feed right back into that holistic data set that you have. Another option, you want to create a daily snapshot. This is a case for previously a recursive data flow is kind of your only option. Um, so this would be for data that changes day to day and you want to retain those historical changes. So you would ingest just the current day only. Caveat there, this can make your pipeline brittle because if there's an error in ingest or in the data flow, um, you'll you'll miss a day. So designing to ingest or rolling three days if possible you know, would make it less brittle. But if you truly want to snapshot the current day, um, you're, you're basically by design building a bit of a brittle pipeline. Um, so when you ingest the current day, you add a partition column for that day 
and then the historical data like previously is never processed again uh, but you still have that single data set so Previously, if you were building these daily snapshots, you're bringing it back in every day. It's growing linearly unless you, you know, choose to create a new data set and lop it off. Um, in this case, you're just ingesting every day. Your pipeline's not growing linearly, and you're getting that um, overall data set for yourself. Uh, another option, sometimes you need to restate historical data. So um, you say you find a previous month is corrupted. Um, so when your data comes in, you ingest both the new and the changed data. Uh, you partition it on, you know, partition on date or whatever partition makes sense to you. And then you can update very surgically that historical data. Um, and the historical data is the only thing that, or the partitions that are changed are the only things about the historical data that are being touched. And finally, you have a recursive data flow that you want to convert. So this pattern only works if your data lends itself to partitioning. Upsert isn't available in Magic yet, so upsert type, you know, unique key-based recursive data flows that you have running can't really yet be addressed with this current tooling. However, I would encourage you to challenge yourself to think about whether or not you actually could implement partitioning, even if you are using a key-based strategy at the moment. So, and I would love to talk with any of you about that. Um, so in this case, in order to set this up with my recursive data flow, I would take the output that I'm using, I'd run it through a magic data flow once to establish the partitions, and then um, when you ingest, you ingest only the new and changed data, not the output data set again, partition at the same granularity as the output, and then ongoing your data flow just has this pattern of the new data coming in and being partitioned out to your single data set. All right, so. Partitioning and subset processing in magic. I guess the better answer, what is subset processing? It's kind of, we're kind of getting it in a package deal with partitioning, but in and of itself, it's super powerful. So it is the ability to select specific data loads or partitions in the input in the configuration when you're configuring your input into magic. So you can choose new data loads, you can choose data loads based on a date range, or if you get more specific, um, if your data is already partitioned, you can you can write case statements and logic to pull in specific partitions. So, for example, my initial input has four days in it. I have a formula I've created just to select the last three. Your resulting input only has three, and that's all you're running through the data flow. What does it look like in Domo? I'll show you in the demo in just a moment, um, but it's just in the configuration pane right next to where you would select your data set, there's now a data selection which allows you to choose um, either new data uploads or a specific partition um, or specific uploads. Um, when would you think about subset partitioning? So you think about it if only a portion of the data input needs to be processed or if you need like more robust scheduling within a single data flow, that's my favorite use case for it. Um, or if you need to do surgical updates of specific partitions. So in that case, then you find out part of your data is corrupted. You can go and adjust your magic job to just re-ingest a certain partition, run it through, data repaired, no fuss. If anyone's ever tried to repair a cursive data flow, I mean, you feel that feel. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yep. So what does partitioning look like in Domo? It is on the output tile, and it's just right in that update method dropdown. So you can choose to replace like normal, you can append, or you can partition. Um, and these partitions become an artifact of the data set. They're available downstream in other magic flows and can be used in subset processing in subsequent mag magic flows. When would you think about partitioning? We've already talked about this, you know, when you're creating daily snapshots, accruing data with a curing period, updating historical data, working with really large data sets, um, replacing recursive flows, that kind of thing. All right, let's look at the interface, the interesting thing. So one of the things I wanna call out is that these are very simplistic examples, I know. I'm, I'm completely aware that your, your use cases are much more complex than this, um, but this allows me to show the interface and some of the features without a lot of clutter or, or accidentally sharing data I don't mean to share. So here you'll see in the history, I've just been processing you know, a daily load every day. I'm creating a snapshot here, that brittle pipeline. Um, I've just been processing the daily data every day. However, 
if you look at this data set, it is 5,600 rows. So it's been accruing every day without ever feeding back in as an input. It's just sitting there receiving the output every day. So if we click in and look a little further, um, here on the subset processing, because I'm doing just a simple snapshot, all I'm doing is in here under data selection, I chose two specific uploads or partitions, and I chose to import data when data is processed in the current day. So that's that's all I'm simply doing. You have you know several different options, things you would expect from a date picker. Um, I'm adding a column of current date to indicate that this portion of data that I'm accruing into my overall snapshot data set is just the current day. And then on output, I am, I chose to partition, and I'm partitioning on that column that I just created. So that is, that is very basically how it is in the interface. Um, a secondary example here is a data set I have that's coming in hourly. Um, I want to be able to leverage subset processing on it. I want to be able to write a uh, case statement or write some more structured uh, schedule logic into it. So before I do that, I am running it through a data flow to partition it. So um, like the one I just showed you, it's extremely simple. I'm adding, in this case, I'm adding a partition date based on a date in the data set and um, partitioning it out to the output data set using that date. If my data set, if my input already had partitions, I would not need to do this step. Then in this data flow, I am doing some enrichment. So I'm feeding in that output, it's partitioned, so now I can use a case statement. So in this case, because I have the partitions available and I have this partition metadata available, I can write any kind of logic I can basically think of against these um, metadata fields. So in this case, I'm saying the output of this is going to tell me a number of days that I, or a number of partitions I want to pull in. So um, I'm saying, you know, when the date of the partition name, uh, which my partition name is a date, so I can use that function, when it's greater than or equal to, and then this statement creates a number. It's the current date minus. And this is the really powerful part in my mind. Um, I can have different amounts of data update based on um, date information. So in this case, I'm saying when it is the first day of the month, I want to do a full true up and I want to update a whole year of data. Otherwise, I only want to update the last 30 days. So this gives you immense flexibility. Previously, if you wanted to do something like this because you had a really large data flow and you wanted to run your intraday stuff you know, multiple times a day and you wanted to only true up once a week or whatever, you had to have two different data flows and join them in a view. It was kind of arduous. This allows you to do it in flow in a single data flow. Um, so in this case, I'm just you know enriching the data, joining on some dimension table, outputting as a partition like we talked about in the previous example. So those are a couple of examples of how you can use partitioning, what it looks like in the interface. Um, let's talk about some gotchas. So for the beta, there's a limit on the number of partitions that you can have. Um, the limit is 100 per execution or 400 per data set. I am hopeful it will soon be raised to 1,000 per data set, which would give you, you know, kind of the ability to have that three rolling years if you were partitioning at the day level. Um, but currently, that means you need to think a little differently when you're setting up your data flows, especially if you are setting up a partition job for the first time and you need to run through an old data set in order to get it partitioned. Um, you might need to do that in several executions so that you're only getting that 100 output e each execution. Um, the way that you can do that is setting up a view ahead of the magic job to limit the data that's going in. Um, when you're loading a data, so this is a big caution, when you're loading a data for a partition, the data loaded replaces all current data for that partition. So if you have several days of data that changed for last month and your data is partitioned on month, you need to reload data for the entire month, not just the change days. So whatever data you load for partition replaces the entire current partition. So that definitely causes you to need to think about your pipeline a different way. Um, for example, if you are pulling in partition data via a connector right now, 
Um, you might need to write logic into your query that checks, um, that goes back and checks which days have changes and then, or which, and then get the data in that query for the whole block rather than just the changed records. Um, and then the final thing, currently there's not really a clean way to delete partitions in the interface. There are ways that you can uh, kind of effectively do it by creating a filter that results in zero rows and feeding that through to the end tag of the partition. It will replace the partition with zero rows. Um, there are ways to do it via API, although they're a little bit complex, messy. Um, but this is feedback. Every time I talk to a customer about this, we need delete. We need the ability to delete and to manage partitions. So the product team is addressing this as a high priority. Uh, so hopefully we'll have something there available soon. Finally, how do I get magic partitions and turn on in my interface? So it's a beta. We want to make sure your use case is a good fit before we just turn it on in your instance. You can email me and explain your case, including things like data set size, number of anticipated partitions in the output, estimated number of partitions that would update on any execution, frequency, um, partition granularity, just information that would help me understand whether or not it makes sense for you to use partitions with your use case. I'll review it. I'll let you know if the beta seems like a good fit. If it does, your CSM can request that it gets turned on. I'm in the approval chain. I'll go through and approve it. It'll be turned on in your instance. And then if you want, um, I can set up a 30-minute call with you and your team to just kind of walk through it in your instance and answer any questions. So one call out, you know, this is a beta. There will be bugs. So avoid in production processes or do it at your own risk. I mean, I know there are probably a lot who run beta things in production, so, but it is a beta and it is at your own risk. Thank you, Adrian.